Are you ever in the mood to bake a cake and want to spend the entire day doing it? Well, I have the recipe for you. We're going to make lamingtons. Welcome back to Tubby Time. I just want to say thank you for the support so far. I hope everyone is doing well. And like I said, today we are going to be making lamingtons. What are lamingtons? They are mini cakes that are actually Australian. Um, if you've ever seen the Great British Baking Show, you know what I'm talking about. So this is what we're going to need for the recipe today. And in this description below, we will be listing all the ingredients for you. So let's get started. First, we are going to start off with the buttermilk mixture. If you're unsure of how to use it, there are directions in the back. This recipe calls for a cup and a half of buttermilk. So you are going to use four tablespoons of that buttermilk. And then after that, you are going to be adding one and a half cups of water. Uh, just regular water from the sink. Doesn't have to be hot or cold. Doesn't matter. And you're just going to add that to the bowl and mix it up. Also adding to the buttermilk mixture will be vegetable oil, coconut extract, and vanilla extract. And we will have those measurements down below for you. So once that's mixed up, you can just put it to the side. And then we are going to be using our, we're going to be making our flour mixture. And that calls for flour, baking powder, baking soda, and salt. And once all of those are added in the bowl, you can just mix that up, uh, just stir it in the bowl a little bit until combined. Once that is done, you can set that off to the side and you can use the electric mixer bowl if you have one. You want room temperature butter, uh, not softened, not melted, and not straight from the fridge because that'll be too hard to mix. And you're going to put that in the bowl along with sugar. And you want to cream that together with the mixer, so that'll be high speed, three to five minutes, depending on how soft the butter actually is. Make sure you use your handy dandy rubber spatula and try to get all those sides and the big chunks inside off and then mix it up a little bit more. Once that is complete, you are going to start adding eggs. I add my eggs one at a time and mix it. That's what the recipe calls for. You can add your eggs one at a time while the mixer is still going. I am just notorious for throwing in some shells with that, so that's why I stop the mixer each time. You will be using four eggs. And then you can scrape down the sides, give it a final mix. And once that is done, you will start adding your flour mixture and your buttermilk mixture. Try to add a quarter of your flour mixture each time and then adding a third of your buttermilk mixture. I'm using these measurements because the recipe says for you to start and end with a flour mixture. Not sure why, but I'm trying to follow the recipe as best as I can here. So that will take a little bit of time. You want to use about medium speed with all of that. Low to medium speed. Just until it's combined. You want to scrape down the edges again with the rubber spatula. Just making sure everything's included. Sometimes part of the flour will stick to the sides of the bowl. And then you can set your oven to 350. You're going to need two rectangular pans for the mixture. I used parchment paper and then sprayed them. You can just spray them. Um, I wouldn't suggest just using parchment paper because then the sides will stick. So once the pans are all set, you can divide the mixture evenly as best as you can. And then you want to spread out the mixture on the pans. This was a little difficult for me, so if you do have parchment paper, just try to hold it down while you're trying to spread out the mixture. Again, this will take a little bit of time because the mixture is a little thick and you want to make sure every corner it's filled, the pan is 
filled completely on all edges and all sides. So once those look even, you can stick them into the oven. I attempted to put them both on the same rack and it didn't fit, so I staggered them on the in the oven. And those are going to cook for about a half hour. In the meantime, you can start with the strawberry mixture. I used a 16 ounce bag of frozen strawberries and you want to puree them. So I kept on putting some of these strawberries in my mini food processor. This will take some time because it's mini. Obviously, if you have a bigger food processor, you may be able to do all of this in one shot. So once all of those have been blended together, you can start putting them in a little pot because we will be we will end up boiling them. Make sure you try to blend all of those chunks because we don't want the frosting to be chunky. So, and I just finished that bag. I used the whole thing. Uh, you can also add fresh strawberries. I did not. They were not on sale at the store. So I just got that one frozen bag. But by all means, you can add fresh strawberries. You can add more strawberries depending on the, the flavor, how much strawberry flavor you like. So once all those have been blended, you put it on the stove, medium to high heat, and until it's boiled down, and then you take it off the stove and let it cool. After about a half hour, I checked on the cakes, stuck a knife right in the middle, and it came out clean. So the cakes were done baking. And then I flipped them on the cooling rack to let them cool while I continued doing the strawberry frosting mixture. So there's one cake, little dark, but that's okay. So now on to the frosting mixture. You want to add a total of eight cups of confectionery sugar. In the beginning, I just started off with six cups. And then along with that, you want to add some salt, some vanilla extract, and more room temperature butter. I used a stick and a half of that. And then you can also add the strawberry puree. I'm trying to get all that strawberry in. And uh, make sure you try to use one of those shields for your electric mixture if you have them. It kept a lot of things in or else a lot would have gone flying out. And as you can see, I already made a mess on the countertop, but it saved from making a bigger mess. So you want to mix that up. It was medium to high speed. It looked a little liquidy to me. So I, like I said, I ended up using those other two cups of confectionery sugar and then blended that some more. And, you know, start off at low speed and then you can pick it up. Don't forget to scrape down the edges with that handy dandy rubber spatula because there was a lot of powdered sugar on the sides that you want to make sure go in. So now it's time to frost the cakes. Cakes have cooled. The mixture that, the frosting mixture that you start putting on one layer of cake is very liquidy. I did not realize this. It ends up being more of a glaze. I thought it was going to be a frosting, but it it's not. So, you know, do your best. Your table may get a little messy in the process, but, you know, it, it you can clean it up afterwards. It'll take some time, but I'm, I'm just following the recipe. I've never done this one before, so it was all new to me. So you just want to make sure you get everywhere on that first layer of cake. You can see part of it's dripping down the sides, and that's totally okay. So once that's done, you just flip over the other layer of cake and put it on top of the first. That was a tiny bit of a mistake. If you saw, I broke that a bit, but I'm getting, you're going to be cutting up the cake anyway, so it doesn't matter. You want to make sure it's nice and even, and then you start cutting it. Now remember, lamingtons are mini cakes, so you want to cut them small. Technically, the recipe said you're supposed to cut 24, there is no way I could have done this because they would have all crumbled. 
So I made them bigger than what the recipe said. I think I ended up with about 12 cakes. There they are. Um, I did throw the more burnt pieces away as well. So now you want to frost all sides of the cake. Um, I decided that I wanted to make a crumb frosting just to keep all of those crumb pieces together before I put the glaze on. Um, this was not part of the recipe, so I just took some heavy whipping cream from the fridge and blended that up and made my own little crumb uh, frosting before I put the actual glaze on. This part um, is very messy. I would suggest putting some saran wrap or something underneath so it would be easier to clean the countertops afterwards. Frosting four sides, five sides of a cake for 12 mini cakes makes it extremely messy on the countertop. So once you're done frosting all the sides of the cake, you want to add a little bit of coconut on the top just to give a little bit more coconut flavor. And then I put it on a baking sheet and I ended up sticking them all in the fridge just because the glaze was so liquidy. I wanted it to, to hold onto the cake. So once you're done making them, just stick them in the fridge and whenever you want to eat one, just take it out then. So there's a finished product. So after all of this work, here's our final product, a lamington. It is now time for the taste test. Fatty! I hope it's worth it. This is a lamington. It looks like you, uh... It looks like it could have looked better. It looks like it took about 10 hours. It did. To do. It did, yep. And cleaning up took another 10. We'll see if it's worth it. Where should I go in? Wherever you would like to. Ooh, it's getting nice little... Hardened uh, glaze. Yeah. Well, let's get a cross section here if you can. Uh oh. Looks cute. Looks like cake. Looks like cake. Feels like cake. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Well, it's I would say it definitely tastes like cake. Maybe a little moister than cake. Um, I like how the frosting is on all sides. It's not like a heavy frosting you typically see with cake. It's more of a thin, sugary. I mean, it's very sweet. Glaze. Yeah, it's a glaze. There you go. I didn't remember the word. It's very sweet. But it's, I think it's good. Um, I'm fat and I can usually take down a whole sheet cake myself. I could probably take down like one or two of these because they're very sweet. But it's delicious. I like, I like how the coconut... Works with the uh, strawberry. Strawberry, yeah. yeah. So uh, worth ten hours? Uh no. <laughs> it's definitely something to do if you're yeah. bored. Are you on a diet? You're not gonna taste it. Oh, I was like tasting it. I was as I was making it. Mhm. Mm good. Yeah. 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 Not ten hours, good, but good. Yeah. All right. Well, that is how you make a lamington. And uh, come back and see more videos.